Welcome to a special edition of the Neon Jazz interview series. We had the honor of interviewing legendary guitarist Jack Wilkins. Very active in the world of jazz for many years, he spoke with us about playing with cats like Dizzy Gillespie, what he tries to teach his students, his keys to longevity, and much, much more. Dig it, my friends. Yes, Joe. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Fine. Thank you. Great. Hey, thank you for taking your time out and speaking with me today. No problem. My pleasure. I appreciate it. So, I'm going to start off here, first of all, and ask, how was being born and raised in Brooklyn, how did that give you kind of a backbone for wanting to get into jazz? Well, uh, I don't know if it did exactly, but there was a lot of music in Brooklyn. There was a lot of people that played the guitar, a lot of music, a lot of... Actually, the music of my time was more rock and roll, actually, you know. Yeah. So growing up in the 50s was, uh, you know, Chuck Berry and uh, Blaine Eddy and those kind of people, you know. Absolutely. Uh, I, I listened to a lot, a lot of rock and roll. Um, and, you know, I started to play the guitar. Everybody was sort of dabbled with it, really. But I, I didn't really get into jazz until much, a little bit a little bit later, really. But, you know, when I think about it, jazz and, and rock and blues, you know, there's not that different, really. Right. What about, what, what was it about the guitar that pulled you in? Why was that the instrument for you? Uh, well, it was a thing entirely. I mean, I actually played a little vibes of piano as well. And drums, some drums also at the time. Sure. You know, I, was, I was doing a lot of, I was playing, uh, I played some different instruments. And I was attracted to music, not some, the guitar, not so per se the guitar, but I did look the, the sound of the guitar was actually the most intriguing thing to me. It's a beautiful sound that it created. I think what I heard Johnny Smith plays when I really uh, started to uh, go towards jazz music. Gotcha. What, yeah. what what was your first jazz experience like? Like your first professional jazz gig like? Or even just your first lo- professional gig? What was that like? Uh, a little scary, actually. I was doing a um, high school dance, I think it was. And we were playing pop tunes of the day, whatever they were. Rock and roll pop. And uh, I was getting paid. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was a little nervous. But uh, I got through it, and once I got through it, I, I just said, well, this is fun. I don't know, I can earn some money and play the, play, play the guitar. Wow, a lot of attention. It's great. What's not to like, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the difference between the way you approach a gig today versus when you started out? Where's your mind at? Um, I don't think it's much different. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I try to be... Uh, I mean, I'm a professional as well. You know, I mean, I, I try to be professional in all all things I play. You know, yeah. uh, meaning I, sh- I like to show up on time. I like to be dressed properly. And, uh, you know, make, try to play the music correctly. Whatever it happens to be, if it's my own gig with a trio or a quartet or something, uh, I know what to do there. So you know, I'd like to involve the audience if it's a if it's a club gig, playing some jazz or whatever. It's my. That, that's pretty much what I like to do or do, actually. Right on. Yeah. What, what What do you like best about being a musician? Um. It's a very, it's a creative experience. I mean, it's a creative endeavor. I mean, it, it satisfies me in a lot of ways. It's you know, first of all, playing the music itself is. And it's, it's beautiful and it's mathematical and it's it's uh, challenging and it's and, you know you have to it's constantly honing of your craft which is certainly a um, something to grow on uh, I, I like I, I, it's, it's for, everything about it is, is appealing to me right on yeah so you've played with a lot of greats over the years yeah I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on are there any individuals that you played with that really stick out that, man, that was really fun gigging with them? Oh, yeah, sure, plenty of them. Uh, I would say Buddy Rich was one. Dizzy Gillespie was another. Um, Albert Daly, Bill Evans. Uh, well, I mean, Randy Brecker, Michael Brecker. Uh, um, Paul Jeffrey. Uh, let's see who else. <laughs> 
so many, it's, uh, it's hard to pinpoint one, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, um, Kenny Barron, certainly. Uh, Jimmy McGriff was a great one. Frank Foster and them playing with those guys was, was a thrill. Jimmy Owens. Uh, the, it, there's, there's so many that it's... Uh, actually, every one of them was a unique experience in a way. The music was different for each one. Julius Temple, I, I was in his band for a few years. Cool. I had not transfer. I played with them for a while. Very nice. Yeah. So, of all the all of the those that you have played with over the years, is there anybody that you haven't played with and you want to? Well, I'm sorry, I never got to play with Miles Davis. That would have been nice. And I'm I, I've never played with Chick Corea. I would have liked that. Yeah. Yeah. And and Keith Jarrett. I think Keith Jarrett and I would have played well together. Right on. Yeah. Um, That's about all I can think of at the moment. Uh, cannibal, yeah, sure. I would like to play with Cannibal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. So, what's been going on lately with you as far as recording, touring, things happening? What's going on? Yeah, I've been going to Europe here and there, and um, I'm heading to Mexico next week. And then I got this concert at the, uh, with the Symphony Orchestra at Manhattan School in November. Uh, and uh, got this uh, record, two records are coming out, hopefully by the end of the year. So, Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So, it, it, I I noticed that you've been playing a lot of festivals lately with uh, Jimmy Heath and um, a lot of other folks. What what is it about festivals that you like so much? Um. Well, it's festivals. You know, that's just um, yeah. That's they're nice, of course. I mean, you have the, the you usually get paid well, and it's a lot of good attention, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sure. But it's the same thing as any other gig in a way. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're you're very storied in teaching. What what do you like to teach your students about jazz and about playing and being a musician? I don't stress jazz per se. Uh, I actually stress more fundamentals of music, fundamental guitar playing, uh, or fundamentals of music. I should say. Uh, I make sure that they uh, hone their craft. You know, they you can't play great music unless you you have a foundation of music uh, you know you gotta understand theory and harmony and you gotta put, have, you know the ear has to be developed you have to have some facility around the instrument you have to be able to read I mean you have to understand different kinds of music harmony it's it's, it's the whole package I mean you know jazz shouldn't be any different from any other music oftentimes it is unfortunately yeah and so I mean I, I trained my students since I would a classical teacher would train their students you know yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same thing. It's just, it's just fundamentals, whatever it happens to be. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I listen to all kinds of music. So I don't just sit around and um, think of jazz only. No, I'm, I have a very wide range of tastes in my listening. Uh, so I, right on. Not jazz, but jazz per se is not necessarily something I spend all my waking hours listening to. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Um, now, you know, to be a teacher, you must have had great teachers in your life. Who has taught you the most about music? I had a, I had some some teachers, you wouldn't know their names, uh, some, you know, local guitar players that helped me quite, quite helped me when I was a young, youngster. They, they put me in the right direction. They taught me how to read. Uh, you wouldn't know their names. One guy's named Joe Monty. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's not around anymore. He, he, he wasn't a great player, but he... He certainly had to help me, and he taught me how to read, and he was very encouraging. That's important. Another one is a guy named Sid Margulis, who um, helped me with some professional skills, which uh, I didn't um, know about until he showed me what, what, uh, how to approach certain things. Uh, anyway, and then, and then, but then I started with a guy named John McKeegan. Yeah. Very, famous jazz educator he 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 was he really uh, developed my ears uh, so i was able to uh, hear things that um, it's essential to be able to use your ear when you play sure in any music um and um and i studied some classic guitar with a guy named rodrigo riera uh i'm not sure where he is now uh and um and i've studied with um oh several others that uh, you wouldn't know their names either. And I studied, of course, I studied theory and, and composition. I was a composition student for a while. And like I said, I also studied some vibes and piano. So 
so I became uh, quite enamored with all kinds of music. So what, what has been, over the years, your key to longevity? Uh, playing and doing all of these things and remaining active. What, what's the key to that? Well, you just said it. You just said it. Remaining active, I guess. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. That was, that yeah. was answered pretty fast. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so of all the albums that you've been on, over yeah. the years, what is there a particular period of creativity or an album that really kind of sticks out in your head as man? That was nice. I liked. Um, I always liked um, uh, a record I did with um, Kenny Drew Jr. called uh, "Keep in Touch." Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's one of my favorite records. Uh, so I also liked the Christmas record I did, and um, the record I did with a group called the Alien Army. Very that was a, that was a nice record. I, 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 that was a very meaningful record for me because it had uh, very personal uh, tunes on it and personal expression. Uh, that I uh, it's a very important record at the time. Yeah. But I listen to when I listen to some of that stuff now. I, I still like it. Very cool. But I don't listen to my own music that much, really. Yeah. But there's a record I did with Bob Brookmeyer, also a live record but at. Uh, it's called Sandy's in, in outside of Boston. It was uh, I liked that record too. That was a great record with Ed, Michael Moore on bass and uh, um, Bill, uh, who was in to Joe Barber on drums. Yeah, yeah but I like yeah. my first the first record I made. Windows is kind of a nice record too. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people like that one. Speaking of a lot of people, what what's the nicest thing a fan has ever said to you about you and the influence your music's had on them? I can tell you that right away. It's a guy, it's a student of mine, he said to me one time, he said, you know, watching you play, going to, going, going to hear you play is like going to church. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So, speaking of church and music and influencing people, has jazz made the world a better place? You mean for me? Yeah, well, yeah, for, for, for anyone. Yeah, for anyone. Your music, has your music, not specifically jazz, but do you think the music you've made has made the world a better place? Oh, I don't know. Um, I should hope so, but I don't. I don't know. The world needs a lot of help, but I, you know, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it did much. Boys with that work. Some people may have enjoyed some of it, but that, a better place. It's pretty pretty broad. Yeah, I wouldn't have had a state make a statement about that one. That's that's. The world needs a lot of work, man. So I don't, I don't know. My couple of the tunes I play don't really matter too much. <laughs> yeah, it does need a lot of help. You're right, totally. Um, what's left for you to accomplish? What do you want to? What What else do you want to do in your career? Uh, keep doing the same thing I've been doing. I mean, I, you know, I want to keep uh, developing my playing, writing new tunes. That's what I I do. That uh, playing playing some important concerts and gigs and touring and whatnot, you know, things like that. that that's, that's, it's not a goal, it's just an ongoing process, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, we're coming from this little jazz town known as Kansas City. Have you ever been through here and played? I have, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Any good I memories? Don't, I don't recall, to be honest with you. I think a lot of it, a lot of these places I've been through, uh, you know, I don't really get to see very much. I just play one night and then and back on the bus or wherever, or wherever you are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been all, all over the world, but I, sometimes I have to think, uh, you know, I didn't see anything, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, so of course, I was in Brazil, I was in, uh, Brazil a couple of years ago, and that's different. We spent, we spent three, three and a half, week, four weeks, a month there. And that was different because we stayed in one place for quite a long time, so I got to see a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when I was in New Zealand and Australia and, uh, Philippines uh, when I was there a long time ago and uh, Hong Kong and uh, Paris I've been to Paris quite a couple of times London a bunch of times so uh, I did quite, see quite a lot of that but you know there are places I go for like one day and uh, you don't really see it you know sure 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 yeah. so you know let's say 50 60 years from now so yeah. it cracks open the book on music history and they come across your name. How do you want the world to remember you? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think it matters what, they, what the world thinks. It doesn't matter too much to me. Right. Let them think what they wish. You know, 
I don't, I don't think it doesn't matter much at all. Cool. You know, history, history is going to make up its own uh, own mind anyway. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I, I don't have a, uh, uh, I'm not doing this to get a, a place in history. I just do it because I love it, you know. Hey, Jack, it was great talking with you. I really appreciate you taking some time out. My pleasure, Joe. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. You bet. Take care. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another special edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series, where we give you a bit of insight into the legends that give us all that jazz. And thanks to the legendary Jack Wilkins for his honesty and time. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store or visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things Neon Jazz. Until next time, enjoy. Enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.